For our first experiment, we will assess cellular viability. We will be using crystal violet dye to visualize the effect that our compound of interest has on cells and culture. Crystal violet is a quick and reliable screening method suitable for examining the effect of chemotherapeutics and other agents on growth and survival of cells and culture. This assay relies on the ability of viable adherent cells to remain attached to a growth surface. During cell death, Adherent cells normally detach from their growth surface and can easily be removed from the viable population. Crystal violet binds DNA staining the cell nuclei a deep purple color. Since the dye does not differentiate between live and dead cells on the plate, the cells can simply be washed off. Therefore, presence of purple coloration is proportional to the amount of viable adherent cells that remain attached after treatment. Our compound of interest for today and for future assays will be capsaicin. The question is whether capsaicin causes cell death and at what concentration it kills 50% of the cells. This is also known as the EC50. In order to determine the EC50 of capsaicin, we will be testing seven different concentrations, ranging from a low concentration of one micromolar to a high concentration of 66 micromolar. You may refer to your manual for a detailed list of these concentrations. As with any experiment that you will be conducting, it is important to have the correct controls in place in order to increase the reliability of our data. Our positive control is plumbagin. Plumbagin is a compound that exhibits anti-cancer activity in various human cancers and is therefore expected to demonstrate toxicity in our cancer cell line. For our negative control, we will simply be using cell culture media. This is not expected to demonstrate any toxicity or ill effect in our cells. Finally, our vehicle control will be DMSO. This is a solvent in which capsaicin is dissolved, and when compared to our negative controls, we will be able to assess the baseline toxicity that our solvent has on our cells. So let's begin our experiment. We begin our experiment on day one by seeding cells in a 96 well plate. This is done by following the same steps that we used in our previous video for cell passaging. Briefly, we first rinse the excess FPS and media from our flasks. We then proceed to trypsinize our cells in order to detach from our flask. Then, we inactivate the trypsin using complete media containing FPS, making sure that we achieve a single cell suspension. Finally, we count our cells using tripe and blue exclusion method as described in our previous video. We can then seed the appropriate number of cells and incubate the plate in order to allow the cells to attach. Now that the cells have attached to our plate, we can proceed with our treatments. Instead of using micro centrifuge tubes in order to make our zero dilutions, we will be using a 96 well plate in order to easily transfer the concentration gradients from one plate to another using our multi-channel pipetter. We have now labeled our plate with seven different concentrations and four different replicates. We will now proceed to aliquot 100 microliters of media into a 4x7 grid containing our 7 concentrations with 4 replicates for each.
If we refer back to the manual, we will see that our stock concentration of capsaicin is at a concentration of 400 micromolar. This means that by dividing it in half in these plates, our highest concentration will begin at 200 micromolar. And our lowest concentration will be 3.125. We will now begin our serial dilutions. We will begin at the highest concentration and work our way to our lowest concentration. Keep in mind that our wells contain 100 microliters of media and we will be transferring 100 microliters from each row to each subsequent row. This means that we will be dividing the concentration in half as we move down our plate. Now that our serial dilutions are ready, we can begin treating our cells. In order to calculate the final concentration of compounds in our cell culture plate, it is important to note that each well has 100 microliters and we will be adding 50 microliters from our compound dilutions. We had previously established that the highest concentration in our capsaicin gradient was 200 micromolar and our lowest concentration was 3 micromolar. If we're adding 50 microliters of this gradient to 100 microliters of media, this means that our highest concentration is now 66 micromolar and our lowest concentration is 1 micromolar, which matches perfectly with the concentration gradient provided in your manuals. Now we will begin allocating our three control groups. First, we will start with our positive control plumbagen, adding it as shown in the diagram. Next, we will be adding our negative control. The negative control is simply complete media, so we will be getting it from the same reservoir that we used to get the initial 100 microliters of media. To finalize our control treatments, we will be adding DMSO to the very last row of our control groups, as shown in the diagram.
We have just finished day two of our experiment. We can now incubate the plate for 24 hours in our incubator prior to analyzing using crystal violet dye. Before leaving, always remember to clean your area and dispose of any liquid waste and solid waste properly. We are now ready to assess cell viability using crystal violet stain. The following procedure is slightly different than what your manual explains, but this is a great way to save time while doing a crystal violet stain. We begin by inverting our plate in order to remove the media containing the treatment. We then proceed to aliqua the crystal violet stain dropwise to all wells. Be sure to walk quick in order for the wells to not dry. We will now incubate the plate for 5 to 10 minutes at room temperature. Now that the incubation period is over, we will discard the dye by inverting the plate. A slight tap will remove any excess dye that remains in the wells. We will now wash the wells with a slowly flowing stream of water. After all wells have covered with water, we will invert it and tap it in order to remove the excess and proceed with a second wash. Then we will dry our plate by inverting it onto a paper napkin and tapping it a few times in order to remove the excess of water. If you remember from our diagram, you will see that there should be a gradient of cell death that is highest from the top and lowest at the bottom. You can also see that our positive control exhibits high toxicity while our negative and vehicle controls exhibit low toxicity or no toxicity at all. To finalize our experiment, we are ready to take a picture using our smartphone in order to analyze for our lab reports.